Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between. Um, grab your vices, chill out, and let's get straight to it with episode 20 of Straightforward with Miss B um, with guest co host AG. Say what's up, AG. What it do, everybody? How y'all been doing out there? I'll be glad when I be able to see y'all. Right. I <laughs> know, that's right. Yeah, we. We'll get to that point when we start doing our live videos, especially streaming on um, YouTube. That way people who listens in can join in on the conversation. But this is episode 20. Let me throw us an applause real quick. Hey, milestone. Yes, yes, yes. It's definitely a milestone for us. I am so appreciative um, for, you know, not only... AG um, for kind of starting off this journey with me um, as well as, you know, people who support and listens faithfully. They are following and subscribing to their favorite, you know, streaming platform. And, you know, they're, they're giving comp compliments, critiques. You know, I definitely appreciate that. Whether you hit me in, on Instagram and DM me, just your thoughts on the podcast so far or let, you know, let me know what favorite episodes so far that you like. You know, we're appreciative of all of those things, and I'm glad that we have definitely reached this this milestone of 20, 20 episodes. How you feel, man? I feel great and, and glad to be included, you know? Yeah, who would have ever thunk? <laughs> you would have made it this one. Right. <laughs> who would have ever no, not saying made it this far, but whoever thought you and I would be <laughs> on a podcast. Oh shit. We did. <laughs> we thought it. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it ain't yeah. like we grew up talking about it, you know. We never say, uh -huh. hey, you know, one day we gonna grow up and we gonna do a podcast together. That ain't never really been in our mind frame, but I'm glad. I'm glad that you, you know, you you you've been dealing with my with my BS. You know, I do come. <laughs> I'm not I'm the most nicest person on the block, so he's been, you know, having to deal with my mouth sometimes on the end. But he's been a great sport about it, and I do appreciate. Thank you so much, Ag. And you're truly welcome, and I'm just happy, glad you happy for the opportunity. Uh huh. So, how was your weekend, man? Or your this past week, you had a lot going on. Yeah, I had a little bit too much going on. When um, my cousin getting married this week, so we had to um, do a little something for him last week. My daughter went to the little dance, eighth grade dance. Oh, okay. And I had a party that we had. I had a party. My what class. Kind of party. Class of ninety one, Phillips High School Red Raiders. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we had old summer jam. Dang. Man, speaking of that, I think this is our 30th. Got to be our 30th. Is this your 30th? No, nah, it's 31 for me. Okay, okay, okay. Year. Okay, okay. So y'all just waited. I'm like, wait a minute. If you came out in 91, I came out in 92. Um, yeah, so it is our 30th, Mays High, Benjamin E. Mays High School. This is the home of the Raiders. Shout out to everybody out there. I know that they were trying to, my class was trying to come up with something. I believe something is supposed to happen either in June or July, but I need to go back to our Facebook, you know, group page and see see what they got going on because I don't really, I pop in and out on Facebook, so I don't really keep up. <laughs> keep up what's going on so i need to check that out for sure <laughs> i'm pretty sure they're having something but you might not know right i know i know like two years ago they was talking about okay we all we probably need to maybe leave atlanta go travel somewhere maybe dominican republic or you know somewhere but they oh, never really hard. yeah it's never been finalized and i didn't hear anything else about that you know traveling so I don't know if they decide to maybe just, you know, I don't know, do a party here or something. Yeah. But it don't matter what it is. It'd be glad to see, you know, see everybody. My week, um, per se, my week was a uh, lot going on, a lot going on. Um, I was having to kind of prepare and do some things um, on the career front. You know, I'm all, all about <laughs> elevating and stuff like that. So I've been working on that this week and, um, as far as, uh, just, you know, 
leisure activities. I went and supported um, a friend of mine um, over at Shop Lux. Um, she sells hats and, and glasses, like frames. Um, at this point, um, I'm sure she's probably going to bring on more, you know, clothing type items. Um, but yeah, I went out there and so shout out to Helena. Um, you guys check Where her is, out or shop. Where is located? Um, she has, she's online. She's online. So she basically was a street market, um, over the weekend and she had a, you know, had a vendor booth out there. So I wanted to go, oh, okay. go out there and support her. So I bought a hat and I bought some, um, glasses as well. And I bought some other things. There was, you know, other people selling, you know, just kind of like natural products. I bought some, um, but I bought some sea moss that was mixed with like um, organic mango. So I've been taking that every day, doing like a teaspoon of that. I mean, a tablespoon of sea moss every day. So that's been working out good. I bought some. Um, I found another person. Yeah, another person. <laughs> What'd you say? I said some toilet paper. Oh God! Right. Sea moss. <laughs> right. Um. Another guy, he was selling some, um, he had some, you know, some THC-infused wine um, that oh he does. God. That was good. So I've been sipping on that every day. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no. Shoot, the bottle was $50 a, $50 a piece. I bought one for my mom them, and I bought me one to bring home. But it's pretty good. It's a pretty good wine. He had different type, you know, different flavors. He had like this real sweet Moscato tasting one. And then, you know, he had the, you know, sweet slash sour tasting one. Um, he had a lemon flavored wine. I didn't like the lemon. The lemon flavor was too, too sour for me. So, um, but the one I got was, it's, it's pretty good. You're only supposed to take maybe like half a shot of it. That's all you need. That's all you a need. Half a shot of wine. That's all you. That's literally all you can drink. <laughs> you be hey. right here comatose, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that stuff. I don't like that. Why? I don't like to eat it or drink it. I like to smoke it. Man, you that's, got the track. Man, that high be uncontrollable. You can't control that high. Yes, you can. No, you can't. You can if is no. For me, I think I can't control the the. When it's mixed in food, like I used to buy like the brownies, the cookies, you know, from somebody, yeah. another friend of mine. Um, and I saw myself just munching on it. You know what I mean? Because I'm, <laughs> I'm already a food girl. I, I'm a foodie. So I would kept munching on it, kept munching on it. I'm like, oh my God, I'm just gaining weight. I said, I can't do this food version no more. And then. A friend I went to high school with, she was selling the gummies, you know, and she had, like, candy. So I said, well, let me try the candy. And that was pretty cool because it don't, mentally it doesn't, you know, make me want it much on food, literally, you know. So I said, well, I saw this wine version this weekend. I'm like, let me go ahead and try the wine. So I've been sticking with just taking half. I'm literally, all you need is, if you take more than half a shot, if you take a whole shot, oh, you out. You ain't even you ain't even thinking about eating because you you ain't gonna be able to move. That's what I'm saying. I don't want none of that. Yeah. Oh, good. But shout out to those, you know, African American yeah. black entrepreneurs out there, you know, doing their thing. I definitely wanted to, you know, show my support for sure. But today, you know, we we um, regrettably. We will need to be continuing the conversation of mass shootings. This is a, you know, going to be a little somber type of episode, but I'm just pissed off like a lot of other people in our nation that is pissed off um, because this is an ongoing problem. It's been happening for years, and it's just gotten... It's still what? It doesn't seem to gonna stop. It's it, not gonna stop. Exactly. It doesn't seem to stop until we get our hands around these gun laws. That is that is very much of the importance. So, um, before we get to the to that part, you know, Rob Elementary, um, 
we definitely want to start with sending our thoughts and prayers, our condolences to the 19 kids that were killed um, during this mass shooting and also the two teachers as well who, you know, of course, sacrificed their lives. Um, the teachers, Eva Morales and Irma Garcia. Um, I didn't write the list of the kids' um, names for the reason. I know last week on episode 19, um, we did, you know, I did go through the list of and name out the individuals, the adults who were killed in the supermarket. But because these are kids and I just felt like there has to be, you know, some sort of, uh, you know, restraint there when you're dealing with underage individuals. And, you know, I just don't want to necessarily be that platform um, that call out their their names, you know. So <clears throat> just out of respect for those families, um, we just going to say, you know, 19 of those kids, the majority of them were fourth graders, I believe. One child was actually in the third grade, and she was visiting her cousin who was in that fourth grade, fourth grade class, and both of them end up being killed. So this was a very, very, very extremely horrible, horrible incident and it's not the first for the state of Texas. And it's like, what, the 22nd mass shooting this year so far? And we are only, what, five months, six months into the year? Yes. It's just too much. It's, it's hello? There he go, fooling with the phone. It's all with him. Can't get right. Got it right. No. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so uh, the killer basically was an 18 year old. And mind you, you guys, this is a this is a heavily populated Mexican community. I believe everybody in the school was of Mexican heritage, or I would just say in general, um, Hispanic heritage. Um, the 18-year-old basically left his house. He celebrated a birthday. After the birthday, apparently he purchased assault rifles because he had just turned 18. The grandparents basically said everything looked fine. They didn't know. They didn't know he went out and purchased no guns. But anyway, on the day of the shooting, he shot his grandmother. And you know how I feel about grandparents. Like my grandmother is my best friend. And for you to shoot your grandma, you're a dirty motherfucker. Dirty. And thank God, I think I read where she did survive. Um, but she does have, you know, severe damage done to her face. So, uh -huh. you know, praise the Lord that the grandmother, you know, is still living and still here with us. But he shot the grandma, left in the truck. The truck at some point, I believe, something happened with the truck. I believe it broke down, if I'm not mistaken. But he made it to the school made it to the school, he got out of the truck, he saw two people, well, he shot at the school from the outside, he saw two people outside, I guess, who were eyewitnesses at that point, he shot at them, we don't have a word on whether or not those individuals got injured or, you know, or anything like that, um, but after he shot at them, he was able to get inside the school through an unlocked door. <clears throat> oh. From that point, he made it through the school, and he just kind of went on his rampage. He ended up getting inside this classroom of fourth graders and just... My God. Why did you do it? Just shooting. Kids 
fourth graders, actually eight years old, nine year old kids. Like now, of course, at this point, you know, we're hearing various things from law enforcement. They're saying that people are questioning law enforcement as to why it took almost an hour for them to pretty much, you know, stop stop the killer. Like, it took about four minutes, I believe, from whomever was the first person who called 911. It took them four minutes to get to the scene, but yet it takes 40 minutes, 45 minutes for them to actually get in there and stop, you know, stop the killer. And he was ultimately um, killed. And we might as well say, of course, because these type of situations, when it was, when it's the white guy, the white 18 year old, 18 year old in Buffalo, he's walked out in handcuffs, but this was a minority. Oh yeah. We're going to go and take him out. We're going to go and kill the goon kill the dude and we see we we see this over and over and over and over and over again in every situation such as this but so law enforcement is up in the air i'm gonna keep an eye on the news story surrounding this as well but yes um you know they're trying to figure out exactly why it took them so long now it was even one guy, I believe, might have been a sheriff deputy that got on the news basically stating that, and he let the cat out the bag, stated that some of those police officers who came to the scene and who went inside, you know, went inside the building, they was trying to rescue their own kids first. <laughs> they, didn't yeah, a, they didn't give a shit about the kids in, the, in, in their fourth grade class, unless, you know, unless they had a kid in that class. But they were searching for their own kids. Oh, uh, that's a tough one right there. That is a tough one right there. So, and you know, with those type of situations of people being self, self, uh, selfish, you know, in these type of situations, you know, you just have to God gonna deal with them because they they mm-hmm. God is gonna deal with them. But they said that. They think the motive is the guy was bullied in high school. He was getting bullied in his high school. Um, He may be part of the LGBTQIA community. (laughs) They stated that the way he dressed and everything, he was poor. So the kids would talk about him about that, say that he, you know, would wear maybe some feminine type clothing. Um, They would talk you know, about him, about those things. And that is what basically, you know, caused this situation or maybe one the main reason why this situation happened. Um, but people do get bullied every day. And not to say that bullying affects people or should affect people, you know, on the same type of level, meaning, you know, if so I, why you ain't go kill them people that been bullying you at the high school? Why you go to this school? You know what I'm saying? What's why you go to this elementary school for these little kids? When you go to killing kids, man, it's a whole different story. Then you get more folks' attention like this. So, so you hoping. think you think that there was definitely um, an attention seeking, maybe you know, thrill that this kid maybe decided to go to the elementary school. Yeah, he's looking for real attention. Yeah, you know, you go shoot somebody at the the Walmart or somewhere like that, but you go to the elementary school? Oh, yeah. You looking for national attention? Right. And it's it's a shame. And I'm so sorry for the loss of the... Or the students and the parents that lost their kids, and I just couldn't imagine being in that situation. So that's the reason why I think change needs to come, and this is the great situation. It's not a great situation, but it's a great situation 
for something to, to actually start to happen, if you know what I'm saying. Right. After this, something actually should happen. And it should and what are you click what are you clicking in the background? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Was it the lighter? <laughs> no, it's a pen, ink pen. Oh, okay. If you must know. Yes, I must know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's what I'm saying, though. I think this event right here gonna gonna start some talking. And I think some things finna start happening. I do. Well, um, yes, I agree. Things of this nature, um, like I said, this is the twenty second, I believe, mass shooting that has occurred in the United States this year alone, and we haven't been a full six months. Um, in the year. Um, so people definitely um, are looking at um, the Republican senators who basically have been the cause of, um, you know, these gun laws and bills um, to not get pushed through. Um, we've been waiting for years, but because, you know, of course they're lobbying on behalf of, the national, you know, some of them have partner up, partnered up with the National Rifle Association. And, you know, when you think about power and you think about gun control and you think about, like I said, these big companies in private industries who basically have to fund these lobbyists that, you know, lobbyists who try to fight or, you know, prevent these laws from happening. I mean, bills to get pushed through. <sighs> Blood is on blood is on these people's hands, and I wonder if they even think about that. Like, do these politicians and lobbyists do they really just be thinking about it? like blood? Every time a mass shooting happens, and the government does not do anything about it, or they're trying to push a bill through, and you have, you know, the majority of the Senate Republicans are refusing. They're voting no while everybody else is voting yes to try to get it pushed through. It's like they don't have no no compassion, you know, or no true or, understanding because they're trying to retain power. Or do you think a payment came through right after the shoot? I'm sure payments come through. The pay, yeah, payments coming through to them because, like I said, the NRA has these people on the Senate floor that gets to when it's time to send these type of bills through. They have these individuals who's lobbying against it. Right. For no apparent reason, no good reason. No good reason. They just, right. They just doing it anyway. Doing it because they want to retain power, and like I, and like you just said, there's definitely some payola there. Now, listen, the NRA did release a statement on this because you know, again, they they they're kind of like at the center of this because, like I said, no no American should have assault rifles at all. Not no random citizen should be able to go at the age of 18, go purchase an assault rifle. So. The NRA basically stated, you know, they said our deepest sympathies are with the families and victims involved in this horrific and evil crime on behalf of our members. We salute the courage of school officials, first responders, and others who offered their support and services. Although an investigation is underway and facts are still emerging, we recognize this was the act of a lone deranged criminal as we gather in Houston, which they're supposed to have a conference this weekend in Houston, <laughs> talk about timing. Um, it goes on to say, we will reflect on these events, pray for the victims, recognize our patriotic members, and pledge to redouble our commitment to making our schools secure. Now, this probably uh, right. This is just a bunch of fluff. <laughs> They've had multiple, multiple, multiple times after Sandy Cook, which was what ten years ago when that happened. They had the opportunity then, but they're they're refusing to make this change. <clears throat> yeah, that statement there. They went all the way around the block and round the corner, and never did make it home. 
<laughs> at all. So, <laughs> so you talk about, you know, like you said, it always take, um, you know, unfortunately, it always take maybe one particular incident, like the Black Lives Matter movement, although for years, you know, we have marched here and there, you know, when there's been injustices to, you know, uh, when it comes to officers and um, the black community. We saw with George Floyd how that situation, you know, truly did spark this worldwide outrage and, and people, you know, were protesting on that behalf. Sometimes it does, even though the sh- she could go on for years. Sometimes it's just, you know, unfortunately God's timing to where it may be one particular event that gets everybody to wake up, you know, and maybe right. we could just only hope that this is it. This is it because we do not need to continue to live through this. I don't even have kids, but I'm compassionate, you know. I was born just as one of those people that just care for others, you know. And I just hate to see, I just hate to see, like, I'm sure other people may have felt this way this week, but it definitely just kind of, like, ever since the um, the Buffalo situation, it, it affects your, it affects your, your, your energy, you know. Right. And it's like, having these things happen and you seeing all this unnecessary, just negative things that, you know, crime activity, people get killed, Atlanta every day, people getting shot up, you know, I'm sure where it's you just, at. It's just the hate where somebody <laughs> would do that. That's hate. The hate. Mm-hmm. The hate. Yeah, that's what I don't like. The hate. That's hate. Yeah, it hurts. You still clicking that pen, um, but <laughs> not. <laughs> um, I don't. It just it just be heavy on you, man. It just be heavy right. on you. Like for me, I don't like to be around a lot of negative energy for long periods periods of time because it's like I bring into that energy into myself, and you know, I just be feeling kind of just you know out of it on my own and and it just be too it just be too much to bear you know so I have to you know kind of take my take a break from social media but uh, you know unfortunately now that doing this podcast I kind of have to really stay you know stay up on um things when they're happening so that you know we can talk about it on the podcast but all this shit is sick all of this stuff is just it's mad and it definitely um it definitely need to stop. So one of the questions, let me go to my questions here. Outside of like the, you know, the government, let's just talk about civilian day-to-day life and how, you know, how we live our lives. Um, What do you think that, what do you think that, you know, we could do at this point? I saw somewhere where people, of course, everybody want to amp up, you know, feel like um, school policing, you know, we need to have, you know, at least one or two police at every school. And that's from and also the, elementary the through teacher, high school. The teachers might need to be armed <laughs> themselves, you know. And the teachers be armed. I saw somewhere where I saw literally an ad for bulletproof backpacks, like, having like they're they're about to be making if they not already making i'm sure the chinese somewhere then fact it up you know in their factories then got some shit together but yeah i saw a bullet uh, like a bulletproof backpack and that's it's just sad that's, to think about you know that we yeah. kids have to go to that extreme at school at school mm-hmm. but it's not just school too you got to think about a lot of these mass shootings happen at churches too. Like I right. really be thinking about, you know, <clears throat> thinking about, you know, my mom and my grandma and my dad and 
Man, and just my, church, my family got, who just got, be in church a lot. Yeah, it's we like got police at our church. Mm. Yeah, we yeah, ain't got we no. Already got that. We ain't got no police at our church. I mean, you might have. I think we got a. Like my church is literally right across the street from my grandmother's church, but because you know she's old now, we just go to her church. Um, right. but <clears throat> um, but I yeah, they don't have police. They just have they have like the church security. But not like, you know, no off duty Atlanta police, you know, police yeah. officer there. Uh, but I think that all churches, especially churches that have um a older uh, con- congregation, you know, a lot of the elders, I think yeah. that all those churches definitely need to have some type of off duty um cop. They need a cop at those churches because they always seem to be targeted, you know. Um, exactly. they talk about, <clears throat> as we talked about last week, when these kids, these young kids, you know, they, they're looking at the game and they're playing Call of Duty. They, you know, gaming community. Um, I believe one politician basically says it's the game, it's the gaming community and the rap lyrics. They got these kids acting this way. Um, you know, should there be, should there be, um, some type of, uh, I don't know. From All game. the laws messed up. You got the freedom of speech on the rap lyrics, or you can't do nothing. Right. And then, then you got the gun laws where you can't do nothing. And it's just too many laws getting in the way, and people don't want to change a, a bad law. So. Yeah, but there are things that I think that, you know, these companies can do from a gaming standpoint. You know, maybe not make the game so, um, you know, so violent. You know, these th- those games be violent. I be watching it on YouTube. Like s- some of them be streaming on YouTube, and I'm like, all these guns and you know, and and the games are so realistic. It's like you you literally in the game almost. You know, and you have your ops that you're shooting, and you see the blood splattering, and they they brains be blown out, and I'm like, oh my god. Then they don't, the people that's playing the game don't realize how you getting killed on the game, but then you can start the game right back over. But if you kill somebody in real life, there ain't no starting back over. Right. You know, that's the difference. <laughs> right. It's like they are confusing, um, you know, confusing just that, that virtual, the, the virtual reality world as being what they live, like you said in real reality on an everyday basis. And, you know, these kids that play these games, they're still kids. Their, their, their brain and their mental capacities have not even gotten to the point where, you know, to, to adulthood, they don't comprehend certain things that someone who is probably 30 or over, you know, or 25 and up may comprehend, you know? So yeah, they, these kids, they, they're dealing with a lot, and, you know, everybody want to put the blame on the other, you know, but we're at the point now where it's like, you know, fuck blaming everybody. It's time to take action. It's time to call action. It's time to call to action. We have to protect. If if anybody, we need to protect our youth. We have to protect right. the future because they're the people that will be here. And they will be the ones that keep this this world and, and the nation pushing forward. So we want them to be here, but we don't want we don't want, you know, this generation Z to grow up and they they all screwed up in the brain. Right. Well, it's gonna be half a generation, not gonna be a whole generation. It's gonna be half of them. Half of them gonna be already dead. The rate we going, going. In, yeah, at the rate we going, you are definitely right about that. Girls and guys, so I know around here where I stay, it's the girls and the guys, father. Oh yeah, it, yeah, it's the girls and the guys. It, and you know, we can talk about you know just drug drug use, people popping perks and everything else. You know, all all of that all of that affects your mental. All of that. 
So that is something that we definitely need to um, hopefully, you know, like I said, these people of power and also us civilians who, you know, we have to go out and we have to vote for these people in office. So I I, I just hope that, you know, all of us understand our importance in voting and we getting out there to place our votes because if we don't, then again, we might, we ourselves may have to recognize that, Hey, we got blood on our own hands because, you know, we're not sacrificing our sleep to go out there and practice our right to vote, to put the right person in office who's going to be on the Senate floor, who's going to help make the right decisions for us. You ever heard of too much freedom? That's what we have here in America. They want us the land of the free, but it's, it's, some of this freedom, they need to cap. Some of this stuff don't need to be free. Yeah, but I definitely don't want to be no slave. No, I ain't talking about going that far. I'm just talking about you got too much. Some of this stuff shouldn't be access. Like you can go on <coughs> YouTube and just say, on Google and just say whatever and try and then something gonna pop up. Right. You know, how you do this, how you do that. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, all that stuff should be publicized. Yeah. You're right about that. And then they, like I said good. Yeah, back to the law thing. You gotta be twenty one to buy a pack of cigarettes. You gotta be twenty one <laughs> To buy alcohol, you have to be what? 18 to drive or get a license. Like, it's just the, the law, just sometimes it just don't make sense. But yeah, you could be 18 and you can go in the store and you can purchase a firearm. Yeah. That's a- absolutely crazy. Absolutely. You shouldn't be able to leave at the same day with it. At all. Not on your first purchase. And definitely not the first purchase. You shouldn't even be able to be able to go in there at 18 to buy it. 18 is too young. I agree. But Ain't know, no but. <laughs> Ain't no it got but. To be a, it's got to be a but. Shit, because it's going on. No, I'm saying the I'm saying there ain't no but in this discussion because we we won't change. Like this part of the part of the fight. This is part of, you know, the argument that that everybody is 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 you know, is saying like we screaming like, come on, man, something have to change when it comes to these gun laws because we sick of it. Yes, they waiting for it to come down their ass. Tell me why they do it first so they'll wake up. And that's the problem. That is exactly the problem. And that 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 theory and ideology can apply to so many things. We always, you know, think just because it ain't happening to us, just because it ain't happened to our immediate family, just because, you know, then we don't need to worry about it or we can just turn a blind eye. That's some bullshit. We got to start worrying about it. Right. Even if it ain't happening to us. What you mean your life, sister? So, now. right. <clears throat> so, anyway, I did have something else on this list to talk about. Just how you know, of course, the the how law enforcement handled the situation, um, and how media always handle these situations when it comes to minorities versus how Caucasian criminals are handled uh, when it comes to these mass shootings. We saw the Buffalo shooter um get walked out we saw dylan roof which was back in what north carolina situation when he went into that church we saw him get walked out of the crime scene but yet when it's a minority this you know 18 year old mexican he get killed in the school we don't see him walk out in handcuffs Mm -hmm. so I hope people, we always say stay woke, but I really hope that people keep their eyes pried wide open because it's stuff be happening around us and we have to stop having this nonchalant attitude about, 
you know, these type of situations that's happening. It's going to take all of us to, to affect change, impact, you know, make things impactful. It's going to take all of us. And at the end of the day, it's going to be those that's going to, that's going to die by it, you know? Right. And we have those who ain't going to die by it because they really don't give a fuck. But we need to, ch- we just have to change that, that, that thought process y'all <clears throat> and so come keep, together on this. So keep praying for change. Pre- keep praying for change and take action. Take action. Get out and vote. Stop being lazy. You know? And become the person we voting for. We know you can do it. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So before we get out of here, we've been going a little a little long on this episode, but before we get out of here, um, as we, you know, do we tired of coming in here having to talk about these, you know, unfortunate situations. Um, but again, we send our prayers and thoughts out to the families of the 21 people, 19 kids, um, two adults that was killed and robbed elementary. We pray for their, their city, their town, um, and all of their families. Um, again, thank you guys for listening in. Um, it's straightforward with Miss B and AG. Say bye bye. Peace, love. Don't forget to follow us at Straightforward with Miss B on all streaming platforms, and you can follow us on social media too at STR8FWDMSB.